Robin to Webby people, uh, how are you all doing? Um, it's Friday, I think it's the 26th of August. No, it's not. Maybe the 2019th. Um, you may not get this uploaded in that time though, because my phone's out and I've hardly got any internet. But today I'm going to be making a um, making a um, American Amber for my National Homebrew Competition entry. It's going to be a bit a bit quick. Anyway, got lots of hops now, as you can see. Oh, growing up, they popped out in the last week while I've been away on holiday. Um, I've got a bit of an update. I've got this light little video to upload my brewery trip to St. Also Breweries. I was quite impressed actually. They seem to have they have um, blown away any misconceptions that I had about their beer, which um, I think I must have gotten confused a little bit with uh, Sharks Breweries, because they do Doom Bar. But um, there would be a little snippet popped in. Um, I'm going to show you them, but I'm going to try. I'm going to do the brew day today anyway. I'm going to show you a few of the um, the recipes, and I'm going to show you my tactic for winning, which I've never won one for. But uh, I had some uh, friends who who did it last year, and they followed this tactic, and they won. So let's have a look. Well, they they come they come placed in the top three anyway. Let's have a quick look at the recipe. Um, I'll quickly go through it and we'll get cracking. So, uh, this is my American Amber. Um, let's see if we can get in. Uh, my technique, set it all to the max. That's about it really. Um, because obviously they, when when uh, they, they do the analysis and test it, uh, they want to look for all those factors, and if all the other factors are quite high, you're going to hit it. Obviously, what you put in it and how you combine it, obviously the mixture of malts and uh, the mixture of the hops, give it the flavour and actually give it that extra head and make it more drinkable. Uh, so yeah, it's my recipe. Okay, so uh, before I start, I've got to get... Um, Get my water warmed up in the in the grain fire there. I've got to do a bit of treatment. I've got some notes here which I've worked out already. Uh, I've got my mash, my spars, and my acid. That's all ready to go in. Um, so I'm going to get uh, 16, 17, 18, 16, almost 30 liters of. of uh, can I get? Let's get that focus. Yeah, I'm going to get my 30 liters of. Um, Water in there. I'm going to uh, pull out. Uh, once it's sorted to boil, about 75. I'll pull out the uh, sparge water, and then it will get mashed with the grains. Now, obviously, I'm going to do some treatment. I'm going to put uh, a Camden tablet into this, and once I pull out the uh, sparge water, I'll do a acid treatment. And let's go in. Let's get going. I'll um, get the water heated up, and I'll come back to you when I've uh, weighed out the grains. Okay, so let's run through the ingredients. I'm going to go through the um, the grains first, and I'm going to go and use percentages. Right, so we are going to be doing 61% pale malt. This is a fresh bag of my uh, pale malt. I just got there the other week. You might have seen the video. Uh, it's warm the maltings. Uh, I'm going to be using about 35% Munich. Have a look in here. You can see it's slightly different, darker colour there. Uh, a bit of a bag of that anyway. And what we're looking at 2.4% caramel malt, that's 150. And about another 2% of roasted barley. That's good. My uh, obviously, that's a mixture of malts, plus, I'm going to that obviously just. Um, uh, gives us more of, a, of an amber flavour, amber colour obviously and the amber colour will come out of the Munich as well and the crystal malt will help with combination of malts so I'm making a um, what am I making? I'm making a 20 litre batch today it will be 20 litres in the end it's going to go into a corny keg and then be bottled obviously for the kumpu 
but uh, let's get all these measured out and uh, we'll be ready to go. Now the mash, the water is now up to 40 degrees. I treated that with a, a Camden tablet to dissipate the chlorine. Right, come back to you soon. Give you an idea of all the, uh, the colours and the mixture. We I put more in the pot, or in this bucket anyway. Uh, so there's the uh, crisp. There's the crystal, there's the Maris Otter, this is the Munich, and this is the roasted barley. That's the idea of the proportions. Uh, I'll mix that together a bit now and we'll pop it in the mash. I'll pop it to start it mashing soon. So there we are. Back to you soon. So I forgot to put the top on here. No way you get a good look at it. Um, obviously, the overflow's there, and I put my filter on top of it. All mashed in. I went camping obviously and I bought a new cool box. Little did my missus know I was actually buying it to store my uh, my hot mash water, hot sparge water. So there it is, that's my uh, sparge water. I'm going to pull this out and I can I put my hot my uh, certified degrees water in there and that'll stay exactly the right temperature until I'm uh, ready to do my sparging. And uh yeah, this is, I've uh, just treated this with, um, I've actually reduced it down to 4.5% acid, it was 6, but I took a uh, acidity reading and adjusted it correctly to today's temperature. Uh, I might, I think I might have actually sussed out what I've been doing wrong with my pH, uh, my alkalinity test. I think I've been sticking two drops of liquid, um, of, a, of the, of the um, dye in as opposed to four. So that may be just it because I think the um, the mash um, the acidity additions look about right. Okay, so uh, this should slowly let trickle down to 78. Um, we'll give that a while now. So I'll start to sorry 68, which I'm going to mash at. I'm going to leave this mash for 15 minutes, take a pH reading, and. Um, Gonna get a top on. Right, see you all soon. Okay, so I've just taken a uh, pH reading. That was my target today, was four. Let's come out of five. Hmm, I'm not so sure what that is. Doesn't matter, five's good. Um, the, uh, I was mashing, mashing now. I actually had to take some of the water out to give it a bit of a, uh, bit of a stir but now it's mashing and it's actually going through the visibles it was actually doing quite a lot of overflowing but as you can see now it's actually going through the water um, which is quite good and that water means that none of the uh, particles are going down the middle okay so I'm gonna leave this now for another 45 minutes and we'll finish there and then take and then we'll do a sparge So today I'm going to be uh, bittering with uh, mosaic and citra. Um, I've got 10, 10 of mosaic and 10 of citra in there for 60 minutes. And I've got 15 and 15 of the same again for the whirlpool for the last, well, for 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to take a hydrometer reading in a minute and uh, see what the what the uh, how efficient the mash was and uh, I'm just bringing the water up to a mash out of 75 degrees. Um, also I'm going to have a quick test to see how well my new little cool box, how, how long it kept the water for. I think I put the water in there at 75 degrees. So let's quickly whip it open and see what's up, how warm it is still. It seems quite warm. Uh, it's about 60 degrees, which so I think it's because it's reflective. It um, so yeah, it's about 60 degrees, which is fine. I think that's good for mashing. I think that's maybe more than that because um, because when you got a reflected bottom on the on the cool box, it actually um. The laser doesn't, doesn't read that well. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to bring, bring, 
pull, pull the uh, pull the basket up now and start doing some sparging. Once I've finished sparging, I'll bring up the ball. I'll come back to you when I fit, stick the first top positions in. Okay, so I'm just recording. Uh, I'm up. To, I'm about to boil. I'm just going to put the hops in. So that's my only bittering addition. I'm going to stick the other lot in whirlpool at the end. Mm, sounds good. And obviously these are all pellets. Okay, so we give that an hour, and we'll come back to it. Okay, my bowl's finished. I popped a pro Prolifec flock tablet in at uh, the last 10 minutes. Um, I put it down below 18 and cover it up in a second. I'm just going to stick the uh, Whirlpool hops in. I think it's 15 mosaic, 15 citra. And uh, give it a bit of a Whirlpool. Cover that up and leave that for 15 minutes until we're ready to pop it into the fermenter. Fermenter. I've got it already chilled out. Uh, ferment. It's sterilising outside. And I'm just going to sterilise the airing rod, which I'm going to use. I'm going to use USO5. Finished my um, whirlpool. And I'm just pumping out the uh, water now into the um, Imitation vessel. I've got the air attached there. That's pumping um, air into the port. I'm just going to sprinkle sprinkle my grain, my yeast in there, which I'm using SO USO5. I'll give it a bit of stirring with the um, the air there. Anyway, I'm going to leave that bubbling away now. And I'm going to stick that in the fermenter then for about 18, or well maybe 15 to 18 degrees for about 3 or 4 days. Then I'll wrap it up to about 20 degrees just to get to a direct rest. And um, once we're done there, we'll hopefully get this fermented out in 10 days, get it into a corny keg. And um, Hopefully, have it ready for the HBC in a few weeks' time. Well, oh, there we are. Signed off. Uh, bit of a good boot day anyway. I come the um, specific gravity coming at 10.48. And I was looking for something more like 10, but something like 58. So it's going to have a bit, bit more body to it. It's not uh, mashed as well. But on the other hand, it's actually... Um, Still can be well within style, maybe not quite as strong. Alright, well, I'll see you all soon. Bye.